If you really want to become a senior developer, you must know how to review pull requests or send pull requests with your code, which is really decent, so people will accept your changes. And after reviewing hundreds of pull requests and mentoring people of different levels, I see exactly the same patterns in pull requests always. This is why by the end of this video you will learn what things are important in pull requests and what are not. And just from the beginning here is the most important point for you. Pull request is not about code style or a solution that you like in particular. 90% of the developers when they start reviewing a pull request always comment either about coding styles or a specific solution because they don't like it. And this is completely wrong. These are two least important things in reviewing pull requests. So you need to switch your mindset to a senior level. It is not just about checking pull requests for bugs, it is about checking if the code is scalable, can be easily supportable and understandable even for junior developers. Reviews are there simply to check the health of your code base, nothing else. It is not a gatekeeping, it is a collaboration. Which means your goal as a developer not to reject pull requests 20 times just because you don't like particular code style or you want to rename every single variable. And actually building senior habits and working towards senior roles is exactly what I'm teaching in my middle to senior frontend bootcamp. Second most important point is that naming matters. And yes, I said that code style doesn't really matter, but naming matters because it improves readability and makes code easier to understand. You need to always check if the meaning of the variable or a function is accurate. It must be understandable what function does just by looking on its name. If it's not, then it's a bad name. Additionally, it is extremely important to look for over-engineering and unnecessary abstractions. A lot of developers really like to move some functions to helpers just to make their functions reusable, and they don't care that they're using this function for only their own specific case. This code would never be reusable, and you must understand that such abstractions just make your code more difficult to support. Another point is code structure and readability. Is the code really easy to navigate? Can you understand which function is being called one after another and can you follow the logic of the program? You need to check the code for clear responsibilities. There shouldn't be a single god object or a function which implements everything in your component. Following single responsibility rule is extremely important here. And when we're talking about fronted, most developers often think only about happy path. They don't really plan to implement loading states, error states. They don't add a functionality what will happen if the network request fail or if you are getting unexpected data from the backend. Checking for edge cases and UX failures is extremely important for frontend pull requests in particular. Another important point is tests. And here you for sure want to say, okay, tests are obvious, we must cover everything with tests and we're golden. But now a lot of people like to use AI to cover their components or helpers with tests, but these tests might be meaningless. It is extremely easy to ask ChatGPT to write a bunch of tests, just copy paste them to your component and see green checkboxes. In reality, it doesn't really mean that your component becomes more stable or gets less bugs. So you need to check exactly what is being tested and if it makes sense to test that at all. Another point is about performance. Obviously, premature optimization is a bad thing, but at least some optimization is in order. If you can do lazy loading, this is totally fine. If you can catch data from the API because you are getting the same data again and again, obviously it is a good thing to do. Caching things and avoiding heavy computation is a way to go in every pull request. And the last one might sound weird, but it makes a lot of sense. Did you use Git correctly? Are all your commits understandable and easy to read? Is your pull request named at least with the ID of the ticket from Jira, for example? If not, you have a problem. People won't really think that you are a senior developer if you don't follow these rules. So let's have a look on the example of the pull request. 
If I have a title of pull request like work in progress, it's a bad thing. Much better would be to have an ID of your ticket and then the title what exactly this feature is about. The next thing is commit. If you have here a bunch of commits with the name work in progress, it is a bad idea. All changes that you did in the pull request is much easier to check if they are isolated and implement a specific part of your feature. Then it is much easier to go through pull requests when you don't need to check 200 files, but just several files which were changed to implement specific functionality. And obviously the naming like work in progress are meaningless, it is much easier to write something like edit markup for the registration form. And when we are checking pull requests, it should not be big, because if the pull request is 1000 files, nobody will check it, they will simply either reject it or accept it, the outcome is always bad. Pull requests should be possible to review. So what exactly should we check in this pull request? Like for example, here we see that the state was really bad, like an array with checked false and background color. And now we have just a single state issue entries, which covers all our needs. Additionally here, the naming like handle select deselect all doesn't look great. And it was changed to the name select all, which is a great name for the function. So again, you need to check for readability and code structure, not for just some specific implementation or coding style. And if you are serious about moving to senior position, make sure to check my front and middle to senior bootcamp, it will help you in all areas that you need as a senior developer, like coding skills, architecture, algorithms in interviews and even building a SaaS alone. And you can find the link in the description box below.